In this video, we're going to go over the 300ZX Z31 rear camber adjustment brackets. Um, this is the rear cross member out of our Z31. We've got it all powder coated and prettied up before we put it back in. Uh, but these are the, uh, the brackets that we put on it. And uh, so that way we can adjust uh, some of the negative camber out of it uh, because we're lowering it with coilovers. So we're just going to touch base on the brackets and the process that we went through to put them on. So with the brackets, uh, they're steel, so that way you can weld them on. And um, we left some uh, slits in them in case you do need to, to move these. Once these were formed and uh, we found that um, this was a solid piece across here, they uh, would be incredibly difficult to, to do any type of adjusting on. So we, at, we left the, the slits in there, one, as a bend relief, so this could bend flat and not be distorted, but also we realized that um, depending on uh, factory bushings, aftermarket bushings, sometimes you might have a little bit of a gap variance, and so we wanted you to have the option to be able to slightly adjust these in and out as you were welding them on. Also, you know, as you weld, you know, depending on welding skill set, uh, there can be some movement in there as you add heat to them. So we did that. One thing I want to point out is that you'll notice that on our finished ones that are all welded in, you don't see that. That's because after you've got them all tacked into place and welded, you're going to want to uh, weld in those slits uh, to give it that extra strength back. So um, another thing is, is that you can see here, this is slotted and that's, and then, then this has the, the four holes. And that's so once you move your, uh, this this will mount inside the control arm here, but once you um, put this in the control arm in place, you're gonna want to be able to adjust this, and it's gonna change the angle, and so that's why the slot is here, and then you have the fixed points on the outside, so that way they'll lock in, so you don't have to worry about that slipping if it was all just a complete slot. Um, so this is the factory mount here that is, um, it has the conical, the, you know, uh, washer that goes in here. Um, it's on this one here, just sitting in here. And um, that's so you can adjust toe. That's a factory adjustment. And as many of you know, um, if you lower your car, um, it gives you a lot of negative camber and there's not a way to adjust that out and so um, we found I think we were like three and a half degrees of negative camber on ours when we got the coilover set on and had it sitting well three and a half on one side and two and a half on the other side with the factory <laughs> set up and so um, we didn't want that we wanted about a half a degree of negative camber on ours so um, we decided to, to make these brackets which was our solution um, again, you want, well, not again, but first you want to make sure that, um, since this is a holding on your control arm, that, uh, you have, uh, somebody, a professional welder weld those in for you. We TIG welded ours all in and, uh, you can kind of see the finished product after we powder coated them all, um, with the suspension that we wanted, suspension setup that we wanted. And, uh, you know, these aren't DOT approved, just like anything, you know, off-road use only. But, uh, yeah, we're getting ready to reassemble this, put this back in the car. Um, and so now what we were able to do is when we mount this in the top, uh, the top point, it's about, it takes about a half a degree of negative camber out of our setup. So, you know, one side was at three and a half, it dropped brought it to about three. The other side went from uh, two and a half to two. And then each hole that we moved was about a, a degree of camber adjustment. And so we ended up being a, a hole off on side to side so we could actually get it even. But um, it was nice that we we're actually able to do that. And so if you're about a half a degree off at this uh, or you're taking about a half a degree of camber out at the top. 
then the next one would be one and a half, then two and a half, then three and a half. And so that just kind of gives you a reference of how much adjustment you have. Um, next, I'll just kind of talk about um, what we did to actually prepare the cross member to put these brackets on. Okay, so you, obviously you can see here that we have our new bracket. It's all welded in. We're, we're getting ready to put this on the car. But when we started with this, it has a factory uh, OEM bracket that's on here. And so we, you know, we had to get off the cutoff wheel and um, cut that out. And so um, there's a factory bracket that's here. And so you somewhat carefully need to cut that out. If you just get real aggressive at it, you can actually cut into the cross member itself, which ideally you want to avoid because then you'll likely have to weld that to repair it. So um, we just cut that off, um, left a little bit on there, use the grinder to kind of clean that up and get it all ready to go. And then once we had it all prepped and obviously all the paint and everything around where we were going to weld all ground, ground off, um, the next thing we did was um, take our uh, cross member or our, uh, not cross member, our lower control arm. And um, we had uh, the inside point here and we actually mounted that in here. And then we took the bracket and um, these are aftermarket bushings. We did this still with the factory ones in, but um, basically uh, took our, our uh, factory bolt and mounted this on here in the top slot in the top position you know the the highest it would go we did that you know with this in place over here and then we slid this into position so that way we ensured that our spacing was right and so if you don't do that and you just try to guess over here your uh, lower control arm might not uh, have the right spacing and line up so we did that with this bolted in place, slid this over and actually got it on the cross member where we wanted it. And with this all still um, attached, we clamped down the uh, camber adjustment bracket. And then with that all clamped down and put in position, we, uh, you know, I came through and uh, TIG welded some tacks on this um, and then, you know, articulated it to make sure everything was good. I pulled out the the bolt on this outside, moved it down a notch, moved it down a notch, moved it down a notch to make sure that um, everything lined up the way I wanted it to. And once I was sure that that was where I wanted it, I, I went ahead and burned this in. Um, you can see on here, like I said, I welded in those slits and then I welded, you know, crossed, down, crossed, down, and then flip this over. This is underside, which you'd see and so on this, I actually welded inside and outside. I welded here, welded here, welded across here, welded down and around the outside. And so <clears throat> got this position. In our case, after we got that on, we went ahead and sandblasted the whole cross member, uh, powder coated it, uh, silver vein, then powder coated a clear over it. So all of our suspension components are either going to be this uh, silver vein color or uh, satin black. Uh, for some contrast so um, we did put this back together we reassembled the whole car before we powder coated it you shouldn't need to do that but we did um, just to make sure that we had the uh, camber adjustment that we wanted and so we got the whole car sitting um, you know within about ours I think was quarter or tenth of a degree um, side to side which was nice since these are you know one degree adjustments but we did find that they ended up being off a hole and that was for whatever reason, the factory setup, they weren't even side to side. So it was nice that we were actually able to, to get them uh, almost perfectly even left to right. And um, so our next step is we're gonna reassemble the whole thing and then um, we'll go ahead and adjust this uh, back to where we wanted it. Um, one thing is uh, that I should mention is that in order to once you put it in, in order to adjust it, you're going to want to, you'll have to pull out the bolt. So that way the, uh, you know, this will go in here. Um, so when this is uh, in position, you're going to have to, you know, pull out the bolt. So that way you can, at least part way, so you can adjust it. 
to get it into a different uh, slot. And we've done that, on, or a different notch in the outer hole. And we've done that on ours. Uh, and it works pretty well. It's pretty, pretty, pretty quick to do um, with the back of the car lifted up. So obviously it's, it's a little bit of a job because you do have to pull the suspension, the cross member, uh, control arms, everything. But if you're in the, if you're going to be lowering your car anyway, you're already disconnecting a lot of that. Um, as you can see, we have the urethane bushings we're replacing here. We have new urethane bushings that we're putting in here, new mounts for the differential. So if you're going to be doing a, like a suspension refresh in the back and lowering it anyway, um, a good option to uh, um, put in the camber adjustment brackets so that way we can uh, get our camber in appropriate range for tire wear and uh, effective driving. So um, these are available from skillard.com. And if you have any questions, please email sales at skillard.com.